The McDonnell XF-85 Goblin is an United States Air Force prototype fighter aircraft conceived during World War II by McDonnell Aircraft. It was intended to deploy from the bomb bay of the giant Convair B-36 bomber as a parasite fighter. The XF-85's intended role was to defend bombers from hostile interceptor aircraft, a need demonstrated during World War II. McDonnell built two prototypes before the Air Force terminated the program. The initial concept was for the fighter to be carried half-exposed under the B-29, B-35, or B-36. The Air Force rejected this proposal, citing increased drag, and hence reduced range for the composite bomber fighter configuration. On March 19, 1945, McDonald's design team led by Herman D. Barkey, submitted a revised proposal, the extensively redesigned Model 27D. The smaller aircraft had an egg-shaped fuselage, three fork-shaped vertical stabilizers, horizontal stabilizers with a significant dihedral, and 37 degrees swept back folding wings to allow it to fit in the confines of a bomb bay. The diminutive aircraft measured 14 feet 10 inches long, the folding wings spanned 21 feet and only a limited fuel supply of 112 U.S. gallons was deemed necessary for the specified 30-minute combat endurance. A hook was installed along the aircraft's center of gravity, in flight, it retracted to lie flat in the upper part of the nose. The aircraft had an empty weight just short of 4,000 pounds to save weight, the fighter had no landing gear. During the testing program, a fixed steel skid under the fuselage and spring steel runners at the underside of the wingtips were installed in case of an emergency landing. Despite the cramped quarters, the pilot was provided with a cordite ejection seat, bailout oxygen bottle, and high-speed ribbon parachute. With four 50 caliber machine guns in the nose made up the aircraft's armament. In service, the Parasite fighter would be launched and retrieved by a trapeze. With the trapeze fully extended, the engine would be air-started and the release from the mother ship was accomplished by the pilot pulling the nose back to disengage from the hook. In recovery, the aircraft would approach the mother ship from underneath and link up with the trapeze using the retractable hook in the aircraft's nose. The anticipated production shift would see a mixed B-36 fleet with both fighter carriers and bombers employed on missions. There were plans that, provisions would be made to accommodate one XF-85, with a maximum of four per bomber envisioned. Up to 10% of the B-30SXS on order were to be converted to fighter carriers with three or four F-85s instead of a bomb load. McDonnell test pilot Edwin Forsman Schock was assigned to the project, riding in the XF-85 while it was stowed aboard the EB-29B, before attempting a free flight on August 23, 1948. After Schock was released from the bomber at a height of 20,000 feet, he completed a 10-minute proving flight at speeds between 180 and 250 miles per hour, testing controls and maneuverability. When he attempted a hookup, it became obvious the Goblin was extremely sensitive to the bomber's turbulence, as well as being affected by the air cushion created by the two aircraft operating in close proximity. Constant but gentle adjustments of throttle and trim were necessary to overcome the cushioning effect. After three attempts to hook onto the trapeze, Shock miscalculated his approach and struck the trapeze so violently that the canopy was smashed and ripped free and his helmet and mask were torn off. He saved the prototype by making a belly landing on the reinforced skid at the dry lake bed at Muroc. All flight testing was suspended for seven weeks while the XF-85 was repaired and modified. After boosting the trim power by 50%, 
adjusting the aerodynamics, and other modifications, two further mated test flights were carried out before Schock was able to make a successful release and hookup on October 14, 1948. During the fifth free flight on October 22, 1948, Schock again found it difficult to hook the Goblin to the bomber's trapeze, aborting four attempts before hitting the trapeze bar and breaking the hook on the XF-85's nose. Again, a forced landing was successfully carried out at Muroc. Two main reasons contributed to the cancellation of the XF-85, Deficiencies revealed in flight testing included a lackluster performance in relation to contemporary jet fighters. And the high demands on pilot skill experienced during docking revealed a critical shortcoming that was never fully corrected. The development of practical aerial refueling for conventional fighters used as bomber escort was also a factor in the cancellation. The two Goblins flew seven times, with a total flight time of two hours and 19 minutes with only three of the free flights ending in a successful hookup. Schock was the only pilot who ever flew the aircraft. <laughs> I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet, damn ain't that great I don't wanna go to work, cause my boss is a jerk, and I'm not even that paid I need a change in my life, cause I don't feel alive, and there's nothing that makes me happy oh.